My new guest bathroom is turning out to be classic and functional, and will keep guests out of my bathroom. But as all the pieces were coming together in my mood board rendering and in real life, the plain creamy walls felt a little, well, plain. I love when small intimate spaces get a heavy dose of drama, so I had to use a bold wallpaper in here. But wallpaper can be crazy expensive, and I had a special design in mind that I couldn't find anywhere. So let's do this the old fashioned way. Hey everybody, welcome back to Reissued. If you're new here, my name is Andrew. If you're not new here, you may know that although I sometimes find a way to do things the easy way, more often I end up doing things the hard way. So with that in mind, today we are hand painting wallpaper in my new bathroom. Let's do it. So this project has been a long time coming. Back in the day, I made a jacket for my channel that had this MC Escher Birds design. At that time, I was already planning to do a wallpaper design somewhere in my house. I decided shortly after that it should go in the new bathroom that we've constructed completely from scratch. Over the last week, I've been sketching out the design and putting all that together. Do you want me to play with you? Over the past week, I've been planning and sketching out the design and cutting out a template. So today we are ready to put that template on the wall, but let's back up and I'll show you how we got here. So the first challenge was to interpret the MC Escher artwork as a repeating wallpaper pattern. Whereas the original piece transforms farmland into birds from bottom to top and blackbirds into white birds from left to right. I want my design to repeat horizontally with every panel so that when it goes up on the wall, it feels more like wallpaper and less like a mural. However, I don't want my pattern to repeat vertically at all, which is a large part of why I decided to paint this by hand rather than drawing it out, scanning it, and having it printed like I was thinking originally. So I used a combination of digital editing and sketching to arrive at my final design. I selected a slice of the original piece, the width of two white sections and two black sections. I will alternate between these sections to make my design repeat around the room. I opted to sketch the design out onto some cheap white poster board to make a stencil of sorts. I think that the 22 inch width of the poster board panels will work well for the scale of my design and mimic the 18 to 24 inch widths of most wallpapers. I drew a grid across my rough sketch and kept my computer close by with the original artwork on it for reference. I started with the bottom panel and worked my way up. Once I had laid out all the basic lines, I could line up the panels vertically to make them connect seamlessly. I also want the design to line up horizontally each time the panel repeats. And since I didn't want to make more than one stencil or cut my panel apart at this stage, I did some careful measuring to be sure that my lines on each side were exactly the same distance from my gridded lines. I kept my measuring tool close by as I started to outline the correct lines with a Sharpie. I had made so many pencil lines at this point that I needed clean, clear lines to cut along. Part of the inspiration to hand paint my wallpaper like this came from Christine McConnell's video where she restored and filled in the gaps in her historic wallpaper, as well as her video where she designs her own wallpaper pattern to be printed and installed in her house. I always appreciate the insane detail and workmanship of Christine's projects. She always takes the time to do things the right way and has an unwavering commitment to her own style. I think the YouTube algorithm can be very friendly towards trends when it comes to design, which can be fun. But I think the core of good timeless design is rooted in filling your space with ideas and pieces that you love rather than just what's trending, you know? While I was at it, I started sketching in some of the fine detail lines to see how those might look in the context of the larger design. If only the painting process I ended up using was as simple as the chisel tip marker is here. If I do graphic hand painted wallpaper again in the future, I'll definitely experiment with using a felt tip pen to speed along the process rather than relying solely on brushes as I did this time. So I could spend literally all day detailing this template, or I could cut it out and then figure out the details later. 
Um, I think that's gonna be the better thing because I don't know how I'm gonna make a pattern with these little details anyway. So let's cut these out and then we'll worry about all of those little lines later, I guess. I start the cutting process at the top, cutting away the areas that will be based out in black. The first bird is easy since it's fully surrounded by a white background. I use my utility knife on a cutting mat to cut around my Sharpie lines. After cutting lots of cardboard in the past, and carpet tiles more recently, this poster board felt like such a breeze to cut. Once I cut fully around, I remove the bird and set it aside. I want to hold on to all of the pieces so that I can use the positive as well as the negative for tracing tricky areas later. Moving forward, I need to place tape over parts of my design to help me leave bridges to keep my pattern in one piece. If I cut all the way around all of my pieces moving down, there would be nothing to hold the pattern together since all the corners intersect. So I place painter's tape over many of the wings and necks of the birds so that I can cut out the corners but still keep the pattern connected. As I cut, I follow the lines of the tape. These bridges are perhaps a bit clunkier than they need to be, but with the weight of the final pattern and the increased amount of cutout areas at the bottom, I wasn't sorry to have these wider connection points. Later, I can freehand to connect the lines or cut out the missing parts to fill in the lines where I feel that's necessary. When I was mood boarding this room in Keynote, I loved how the elements were looking together, but something about the room just felt a little bit too white and plain. Getting the room to that stage in real life, I definitely felt the same way. We need some contrast, drama, and depth in this super airy room. I especially felt that way after the adjoining atrium got painted the same color. Unifying the spaces is great, which is why I'm using this color in a lot of the rooms, but I want the energy of these two rooms to feel different. Sunny and outdoorsy in the atrium, and bold and a bit maximalist in this room. I always think that guest bathrooms are the best spaces to create intimate moments for guests that are best experienced up close. All right, so I've been fiddling with this for ages. It's very hard to tell if it's level or not, and it's hard because I'm really trying to judge from the bottom up because I want the design to start at the tile and go upward. But the bottom, of course, is like, in all of these weird pieces and there's like an obstacle there, of course. So I measured from the bottom to the top to 70 inches, which I think the whole thing should be. And we're right at 70 inches and I tried to smooth it out. So we're gonna go in with pencil and see what happens. Now we trace. I'm using a standard mechanical pencil here. I wanted something that could be covered fairly easily and wiped away if necessary. It definitely smudges a bit when I start to paint later, but again, it can be painted over or wiped. I repeat this process by lining up a little mark I made at the top corner and lining up the places where the lines meet all the way down the panel. I later finished off all the tracing with my mom's help. I definitely think this works better with two sets of hands to line up and hold down the design for tracing. I finish off the tracing process by relocating the positive pieces that were cut out of the design, reattaching and cutting any areas where the tabs have been added to keep my design together, and using those to help me connect the dots in the more complicated shapes. On other lines, I just freehanded to connect them. Good morning, everybody. It is very early on a Sunday morning. I was gonna take the whole day off because I don't do that too often these days, but uh, I woke up this morning and I really wanted to paint. So now that most of the tracing is done on the walls, I am dying to see how this charcoal color looks to start filling in the blanks. And I feel like this will be kind of like a calm, peaceful painting process, kind of like a coloring book where you don't have to really think about it too hard. You're just kind of like going through the motions. So hopefully that's gonna be my experience this morning. Let's see.
Was this a peaceful, relaxing coloring book experience? Not a chance. To start out, I used a larger angled brush since the angle gave me some precision and the large size meant that I could cover the area a bit faster. But the super sharp corners and angles really required a smaller angle brush, so I started using a combination of the two. And this process was tedious, like hours and hours and hours tedious. My latex paint dries fairly quickly, so I needed to stop fairly regularly to keep my paint from drying in the brush. But even with frequent breaks, my brushes started to stiffen and my paint would inevitably get less slick and more goofy as I went. The colors I'm using here are Decadent from Valspar, which I've used in every single room of my house so far, and a color match of Prairie Smoke from Magnolia that I used on my half bath ceiling. These paints are both flat, which I think was a great choice for this, since the matte finish is really uniform at the end. I think if I'd used anything glossier, the inconsistencies in the paint job would show up more, you know? I wanted this design to be kind of black and white, but softer and less high contrast, since the tile is so stark. The creamy white and smoky charcoal keep the monochromatic look going, but give more dimension and warmth. I always tell myself that I'll be the kind of person that will do all of one step before moving on to the next step, so that I can make a simple, satisfying video, you know? But in this case, lots of moving parts in the bathroom renovation kept me bouncing around. I was hardly able to trace the back wall at all with all the obstacles in place, mirrors, sconces, etc. So I bounced between painting and tracing for a while. Good morning, everybody. So I have been working gradually a little bit at a time, filling in my birds. The only ones that I have left to do are around some of the areas where I have to remove the sconces or different fixtures to be able to like make the process a little bit easier and not painstakingly like go around. So now that I have everything more or less blocked in, I've been experimenting with detailing the birds. Essentially, I consulted the original piece of art and kind of decided which lines I was gonna go with. And once I had mapped that out for one specific bird, I really want to try to duplicate that as closely as possible. Up till this point, I've just been freehanding everything, but as we start to get into the more detailed lines as we go down, um, I think I'm going to start cutting apart my original templates and doing more tracing of the lines and then going over them. Just because part of what's taking so long is having to choose where the lines go every time, as opposed to just like drawing them on with the pencil and then covering them up. Um, so I think I'm going to try cutting apart some pieces now and doing some tracing. Honestly, I needed the motivation and pressure of the ongoing bathroom projects to fuel me. I needed to paint the upper walls over the built-in washer-dryer cabinet before that went in, so I pushed to finish that section. I needed to finish the area around the sconces so that they could go back up, so I finished the paint around there. I needed to paint the walls in the shower area before the door could go in, so I painted over there. I wanted the wall to be done for the hidden cabinet so y'all could see how the design made the opening disappear almost entirely. So I made myself paint that wall. And now for this video, the back wall and partial side wall were the last areas to conquer. 
So apparently February is the month that I finish up all my unfinished projects. I'm back painting this week. I've been procrastinating on this pretty hard. On some projects like the rug project last week, I procrastinate because I don't feel like I know exactly what I'm doing or exactly how it's gonna work out. And I'm worried that I will like do something wrong and find out that it's not gonna work. Um, but in this case, I've known for a while that this is gonna work out fine. I've had the design all figured out more or less around the room. And so now it's just about the tedious repetition of repeating that all around the room, especially these long stripes are just killing me. I'm so bored. So yeah, this has been a tough one. It's taken a while and I'm really hoping I can get this wrapped up this week. Let's do it. As I make my way around the room, I'm using a much smaller pointed brush and referencing several different versions of each bird that I've already painted. If I copied only the bird right next to it, this would inevitably turn into a game of telephone where the first bird ends up looking nothing like the last bird, since little variations and inconsistencies along the way would be magnified with each repetition. I have made peace with the fact that my repetitions are far from perfect, especially with the angles and widths of the stripes toward the bottom. I started out wanting this to look like a perfectly printed wallpaper pattern, but in the end, I embraced the little variations. I did take the time to hand paint this after all. Why not show some brush strokes and a few flaws? One of the tough parts of doing this detailed line work was getting the fibers of my brush to hold together and not splay out. I think I saw somewhere that you can apply a bit of oil to your brush to help it gel and glide, but since I wasn't sure and apparently couldn't take the time to research, I can attest that a little bit of spit works just as well. Gross, but effective and handy. I also heard, way late in the process, that adding Floetrol to the paint can be helpful in making the paint glide. This is a common additive in the acrylic pour painting method that is super trendy lately. However, since I had been scraping by with spit and tears up to this point, I didn't want to change my method up at the end and risk changing the look of my brush strokes. Maybe next time. I think I'm finally wrapping up this project here. And by wrapping up, I mean that I'm probably gonna keep some paint on hand and continue touching up. Because the more I touch up, the more problems I see. But I think I need to stop so that I don't spend another four or five months painting this. In any case, I'm really happy with how it looks. I'm really excited about it. You may think that I'm never gonna do a project like this again, but... If you like this video, please hit the like button. That helps YouTube recommend this video to other people, which helps my channel grow. If you wanna see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys soon. This room is almost done. Just a few final touches to push it across the finish line. Be sure you're subscribed so you don't miss my upcoming video where I unveil the finished room and show you just how far it's come since we demoed the two closets that used to occupy this space. It's gonna be one crazy before and after. Don't miss it.